Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I greet you all in the peace of the Lord. Um, I just wanted to do a follow-up on the previous message called um, Stop Making Decisions Without God and Then Blaming God for the Outcome. Amen. Um, this message is directed at the body of Christ, but also those that don't know Christ because the world is uh, in turmoil at the moment in terms of what they call the natural disasters which are actually what god calls plagues and they don't understand if i mean even though people don't follow god if something bad happens in their life the first thing they shout is oh god help so deep down in our core we know there's a god as human beings we are created to worship a higher being and everyone who says they don't want to worship god they don't believe in a god deep down in their soul they know they are rebelling and so there's a lot of things that are going on in the world right now and people are asking the question if there's a god why would he allow these things to happen i'm here to bring a message to you brothers and sisters to explain it's as simple as this god loves us god does not want us to suffer the way we are but just like every other parent god doesn't tolerate disobedience amen if a child is to touch a oven and it's about to burn the child the parent would shout hey don't touch the child might get a little bit scared now the child is sad why mommy scared me why daddy scared me it's a warning to prevent from danger amen another example might be like this a child wants a bicycle the child is not old enough to ride a bicycle or the child wants to ride a bicycle in the road why would god then give this gift to the child knowing it's going to cause this child to be hit by a car in the street so you say the parents me don't want you to have fun and in the same way sins are causing death to humanity and god is saying no turn away people don't want to listen or better yet put it like this if 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 god says for example this is a parent a parent would say to a child don't climb this tree because if you climb this tree the branches are very slippery you will fall out and hurt yourself but this disobedient child still decides to go and climb the tree he falls out and break a leg will it be fair and just for this child to now blame the parent it's your fault why my legs broken and this is what humanity is doing to god god is saying don't climb that tree you fall out and break a leg they do it anyway they fall out they break a leg then they blame god for their broken leg god said don't eat that fruit they eat the fruit they get kicked out of the garden of eden they want to blame god for being in exile god said don't follow the way of the heathen don't cause your children to be put through the fire. Do not do sexual immorality with your family members. Do not do blood sacrifice. If people do it, they go into captivity. They blame God for slavery. Don't eat prohibited things. Don't eat things that crawl on the floor and walk with the hoof. Because these are scavengers. They're unclean. They eat dead meat. Now the body breaks out into sickness. Because you want to eat the meat God told you not to eat. Don't smoke. Your body is a temple of God. Honor your body. People catch a cancer. Oh God, let me God. God gave me cancer. God did not give you cancer. You gave you cancer. Herbs is healing of the nations. Did the people eating the herbs of the nations, the berries and the fruits and the plants to be healing their body? No. They go and let the doctors put more drugs and more drugs and more drugs. When they don't get healed and delivered, oh, they blame God. God stands there and knocks at your door. And knocks at your door from you're a child to you're an adult. Now you're old and sick. And you're blaming God for your sickness. If you allowed God to come into your house, which is your body, your temple, no sickness couldn't dwell in there. I'm just trying to talk to you, brothers and sisters. It's times we grow up and take responsibility for our actions. This ain't even new. This is biblical. I just said I'm not going to get my Bible out, but I feel like I should. But anyway, look at this. 
when Eve ate that fruit, when Eve ate that fruit, she blamed the serpent. And when Adam ate the fruit, he blamed God. He said, but it is the woman that you've given me. So he's basically trying to tell God, if you didn't give me this, this, this woman, then she wouldn't have ate the fruit and then I wouldn't have ate the fruit. He basically blamed God for doing what God told him not to do. After he chose to do it, after he saw that the woman ate and she was still alive. And in the same way, humanity right now is blaming God for the things that are happening. Blaming God for things that are happening that's got nothing to do with God. Because he told us what to do and what not to do. Amen. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Let me just see if I can find this scripture right now. Here we go. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. And the man said, The woman which thou gavest to be with me, she gave of the tree, and I did eat. How God telling you, did I not tell you not to eat the fruit? And then you're going to tell God, this the woman that you gave me, God. This, sorry, I don't mean to laugh. But have mercy on me, Jesus. But he's basically saying, God, it's your fault while I ate the fruit. Because you gave me that woman and she gave me the fruit. It's your fault. And in the same way, we want to go around right now and blame God for everything that's going on in the world. And no one want to take responsibility. When God clearly said that the wages of sin is death. So how can you kick God out of schools, don't want no prayers, but then, oh God, why are they allowing sexual immorality? They're teaching the kids to masturbate and teaching same-sex marriage in the schools. They're teaching the kids it's okay to do be a transgender. Did you not kick God out of schools? Devil going up in there inside, people shooting up kids. Same with the workplace, you're firing people for, 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 um, for praying, saying grace while they're eating their lunch at work. You have other areas where it's, it's, it's in the government. Oh, we don't need God. We make our own decisions. So when they want to become the governor or the government, they pray to God to bring them, to elevate them. God puts them in the position and God says, follow my laws and teach the people my laws. And they teach the people to blaspheme against God. Human sacrifice and all this occult stuff. Listen. It's always easy to point the other finger. My pastor, she said one time, when you point at this, at one person, you have three more fingers pointing back at you. So what you're blaming someone for, there are three more reasons why you should look at yourself. The Bible says, examine yourself. Amen? Now, if God tells me don't do something and then I do it and then something bad happens to me, how does that make it God's fault? You think God wants the coronavirus in China? He's been telling them, stop eating things. This wasn't just the first thing. They had tornadoes and tsunamis months ago from last year. When God was telling them, stop, repent. And not only are they eating these things, but they're sending it across the world, contaminating food. Of course, contamination, people getting sick all over the place. So now that they got struck with illness, that's not God's fault. That's their choice and the consequences that they made. Same with Africa and Jamaica, so tornadoes, f um, um, floods, sorry, earthquakes, locusts, all these plagues. Because these people are meant to be traveling the world and preaching the gospel. But instead, they're turning to human sacrifice, blood sacrifices. Amen. Sacrificing little children. Before the altar of God, like God is blind. And so God don't want to send an earthquake. He don't want to send a tsunami or a flood. But he's saying to the people, wake up, repent. They don't want to listen. And then what does God do? Shake them up a little bit. To remind them, remember I am the Almighty. None can escape from my judgment and my wrath. I gave you the anointed to share my word. And you're basically hiding me from society. Brothers and sisters, we need to open our eyes. All this destruction that you see on the planet is because God is saying, how much more will you hurt my people? How much more would the government sit there and watch little children starve and be homeless? How much more would they offer up their family members to be sacrificed? God 
is heartbroken because he let his son to come down on the cross to be beaten, to be whipped, to be have his skin and his flesh torn out by whips with hooks on the ends and blades and knives to offer us salvation, the world's greatest love story, the most perfect love. And all humanity does is walk on God and tell, I don't need God, government, I don't need God, adults, I don't need God, teaching the children to say they don't need God. And then when things start happening, the first thing they want to do is God's fault. If God was so loving, he wouldn't let that happen. These was your choices. Stop taking the power of God lightly. Yes, God is love. He is love. But he's also a judge of judgment. He's also a righteous God. And people are going to reap what they sow. How are you sitting here sowing hate and crime and death and murder and expect to reap happiness? You live by the sword, you die by the sword. You live by hate, you die by hate. You live by judgment, you die by judgment. You can't plant no strawberry tree and expect to have oranges blossoming. You can't plant apple tree and expect to see the fruits being banana. You reap what you sow. And everything mankind's been sowing, they've been sowing it without God's permission. Every decision that they've been making, they've been making it without God's um, direction. Just like now, they're making all these AI artificial robots, drone robots, robots that can think and kill for themselves. So when these robots now to start to kill human beings, what are they going to say next? God made these robots to kill us. Wake up, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of Zion. We have to wake up and stay woke. The devil is manipulating your free will to tell you you don't need God. Just like he told Adam and Eve, you don't have to do what God say. You can be like God. Then you got celebrities, presidents, all these people right now acting, thinking that they're God being worshipped by the masses. Talking about we can be so smart, we can be like God, and we can, we are little gods, and we are listen, we are servants of God. Know your role, stay in your lane. If you look at if you look at the flood that came earlier in in the olden days, what happened? Mankind was doing all kinds of abominations, and God told the people stop and repent, or I will destroy by flood. And they didn't listen to the prophet's warning. They didn't listen to Noah. They laughed at him till the very second he went on the boat. They still laughed when he was on the ark. Then when the rain came, they started to beat down and beat down the ark. What did God do? Close the door. Noah didn't close the door. Because if he had the key, he probably would open it when he heard the people screaming. God closed the door. It's biblical. Read it. To start afresh because God loved the world so much he didn't want to destroy it. He gave mankind a chance and he said next time I will destroy it by fire. This time the rapture is going to happen. Jesus is going to come take his people. Once the people are gone up, what's going to happen then? He's going to come back and be like, oh yeah, I forgot you. Just like when those of days of Noah, so shall it be in these, new, in these days. The Bible says it. People doing what they want, talking about I don't need God. He ain't coming back. He ain't real. God don't love me really. He is the king of kings and lord of lords and he made himself to be less. He made himself less than his own creation to show love for his creation and they turned their back on him. Now look at these things. The devil has mankind eating human meat, not realizing what they're eating in these burgers and these sandwiches, grinding dust. To make makeup and, and all these stuff using blood of the saints to make lipstick. People are on their pockets on their face. Men don't want to love their women. Women don't want to respect their men. Children disobedient to parents. Why do you think so many people are dying so young? These young kids nowadays. The Bible says if 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 honor your mother and your father so that your days may be long. 
These little kids nowadays, because of TV, media, and parents that are not teaching their children the way of God, they're growing up being taught the way of the devil. To disrespect authority. They ain't got no respect for their parents. They ain't got no respect for no teachers. They ain't got no respect for no police. They ain't got no respect for you. And you wonder why they are dying at such a young age. The Bible gives us very clear instructions on what God expects from us. And it tells us very clearly there should be consequences. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy mother and thy father, which is the first commandment, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. It's God telling you, if you don't honor your mother and father, you ain't going to live long. You wonder why some of these people, they want to fight their parents, they want to punch their mom, they want to do all this foolishness. And then they blame God if something happens. Brothers and sisters, you don't need to wake up. You don't need to wake up. You need to go on your knees and cry out to God and ask for mercy and forgiveness. Ask for direction. Repent of your sins. Because God ain't playing. You think the people in the house, that their floods in their house up to their roof are happy right now? You think they're still going clubs every weekend saying they don't need God? You think these people who, who their business are being flooded away by storms and earthquakes destroying their buildings? You think they're still putting their trust in their car when their car just got washed away by a storm? How much more do you need to see to realize that the world is the way it is because mankind is turning away from God? Now God says he's a jealous God. He will have no other God before him. People want to be worshipping fake gods, worshipping demons fallen angels openly worshipping Satan doing blood sacrifice children sacrifice more concerned about their house and their car than they are about being obedient to God taking all their strength and their joy from music and television and fashion and idolatry and vainness and their image and letting their strength come from the most high and God is up there crying his eyes out saying, I did not die for my people for them to still go to hell. Why won't they understand? Why won't they listen? Because we allow ourselves to be programmed in a way that we think we don't need God. But every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I urge you, brothers and sisters, go on your knees and do it right now when you still have time. Because if coronavirus knocks on your door, you might not have time then. If the next tsunami lifts the roof of your house, you might not have time then. If martial law starts, if, if the devil antichrist is revealing himself, uh, listen. Stop talking about next week, next month, next year. Glory to God, the Lord saved me many few years ago. Maybe about nine years ago or so. But I'm telling you this right now. I am 30 years old. And I remember as a teenager, I would say, oh yeah, when I reach 30, after I'm married, after I have my kids, then I will serve God. Do you know how many people have so died since then? Friends, family, all these people. I could have been dead already. Who told you we know nothing about time? Who told you we got 20 more years to live? Who told you just ain't come back in the next five years? Who told you... That you would live to see the next three months. One of the biggest lies the devil ever told, apart from trying to convince people that he ain't real, he's trying to convince people that they got time. Even he knows he ain't got that much time. But he want to convince you you got all the time in the world. People kick God out and then they want to wrap to their protection. I don't need angels, I don't need Jesus, I don't need no God, I'm my own God, Really? So when you die, can you save yourself? Can you add five more minutes to your life? If you fall into hell, can you take yourself back out? Do you have your own keys to heaven? We need God more than we need oxygen and air because he is the oxygen and the air. And he continues to wake us up every morning and even that people take for granted. Put food on our table, clothes on our back, a roof over our head and all we do is complain about what we don't have. What about what you do have? 
You still have a chance to accept Jesus as your savior before it's too late. When you're out here with hate and bitterness and unforgiveness and playing around like all these things ain't a choice. It's all a choice. It's free will. That's why you forgive who you want and you don't forgive who you don't want. You love who you want and you hate who you want. You help who you want, you help who you don't want. Brothers and sisters, wake up. This is not a joke. The Lord is calling for repentance. He is on his way back. He would already came back. He would have already came back. But because mankind wasn't ready, this is why he's delaying. I beg you in the name of Jesus, understand this. Because the amount of people that would have went to heaven are going to be a little bit. So he thought, let me take a little bit longer so that the people can repent. That's biblical too. The five wide virgins and the five foolish virgins. He said, and when the Lord tarried. You know what tarry mean? Stop if I'm but stop tarry. He said, you come out, you're not, but you're tarry mean you take your time. He could have come back already. But he wanted to give the five foolish virgins time to go and buy their lamp. Buy their oil in their lamp. And before they use the time that he tarried, to, oh hallelujah Jesus. Before they use the time that they tarried, that he tarried to go and get the oil in their lamp, they sat and wait till he turned up. Then they ask for more time. Once Jesus comes back, there's not going to be no more time. And this is the time that we have right now. That's the tarrying. The oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Go and repent of your sins so you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because once Jesus come back, if the Holy Spirit don't live inside you and you are deemed holy, you ain't going up. And you don't want to, the Bible says it's going to be the worst on earth ever since time created and ever since ever, nothing will ever be this bad. That means worse than the torturing and slavery. Worse than when the Romans used to throw Christians to lions to be eaten alive. Worse than when people used to be chopped to pieces. There are over 70,000 Christians, 70 million Christians have been murdered and martyred for following Jesus. Everything's going to be worse, worse, worse. Dead bodies everywhere, rotting, causing all kinds of plagues. Floods, tsunamis and tornadoes all at the same time. Demons running around eating people. The veil will be removed. There's no worse in the spiritual realm, can't touch the physical. It will all become one. Antichrist and his demons running rampant on this earth. And no, you can't just kill yourself because even death will leave at this time. You're going to have to deal with this. And God is saying, I am asking you to repent because I'm coming back and I can only take who is holy. I'm a just God. I'm not going to take the people in sin. Stop kicking God out of your house. Stop kicking God out of your family. Stop kicking God out of your work or your life and then expecting him to just turn up as soon as something goes wrong. It's with people nowadays. Oh, I don't need God. I don't need God. Oh, I'm in hospital. Oh, God, help me. Oh, I got hit by a car. Oh, God, help me. Oh, I'm sick. Somebody pray for me. How about if you allow God to be in a position in your life that he wants to be, that you need him to be, you wouldn't be in this predicament. And I'm not talking about lukewarm stuff. Because some might say, oh, but they go to church, but they know God. And, and, and they still, this happened to them, that happened to them because they didn't really know God. When you know God, he delivers you from every affliction. When you know God, he protects you from the devil, from everything. When you know God, even if he allows something to happen, like in Job's life, he restores, he heals and he delivers. When you know God, you worship God in spirit and in truth. And I'm tired of hearing everywhere I go, oh, it's God's fault if God was so good, if God was so good. Do you not know you got free will? Does a teacher not tell a child, if you don't do homework, then you get detention? So when the child don't do the homework and the child gets detention, whose fault is it? The teacher's. And when God says, don't do this, don't do that, or you get detention, oh, it's God's fault. So what happened next? You're going to kill a man and go to prison and then tell, oh, it's God's fault why I'm in prison. 
Or the person that died never had the protection of the angels or of God. So you're going to sit there and be like, oh, it's God, God killed my brother. No, he didn't kill your brother. God did not kill your mom. God did not kill your dad. God did not kill your friend. The devil used someone to kill your friend because your friend didn't have protection of God in his life and the person the devil used didn't have the covenant with God in his life so he was able to be used by the devil. Stop blaming God for things and take responsibility. Because you will be held accountable for even your words on judgment day. I'm tired of this. And if I'm this tired of it, I can only imagine how fed up God is of hearing this foolishness, this blasphemy. There's a testimony one time about a woman, she was telling her daughter, please don't go to the clubs. Please, my daughter, go to the church, don't go to the clubs. And the daughter was jumping in the car with all her friends, talking about, I'm going anyway. And then the mother said, daughter, if you are going to go, then please take Jesus with you. You know what the daughter told the mom? The daughter said, mom, even if Jesus is going to come, he's going to have to ride in the boot of the car. Because there ain't no space in here for him. And all those people was in sin. Drinking, driving, smoking, going to the clubs to party and do this Sodom and Gomorrah behavior. The same Sodom and Gomorrah behavior what made it raid brimstone in, in, in the olden days in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the same thing now. It's even worse because child prostitution. This and this sin is going up like a stench. Who can stand a stinking smell? God cannot stand the stench of all these sins. Holiness is like a beautiful perfume to him. And sin stinks. Who stays where the stench is? No one does that. And so as the car left, the car crashed. They all died. And there was a tree of eggs in the trunk of the car. Do you know that not one egg was broken in that tree of eggs? The car was written off and everybody died. But in the tree of eggs was still intact. Do not take God for granted. Do not mock God. He's not a God to be mocked. Yeah, he's love, but he's also wrath. And the more he's patient and waiting, the more we're kindling up his wrath because people don't want to repent. People don't want to love their brother. People don't want to love their sister. Now, I guarantee if she had allowed God to go with her, she'd probably be to survive the car crash. Probably they all would. Same with the Titanic. You can research these things. These stories are out there. They said, oh, this Titanic. When the guy said, listen, it's like he was saying, basically, uh, there is, like, I don't know, for example, there is 4,000 seats on this Titanic, but there's only, like, 40 lifeboats. The, the, the equation isn't equal. You know what the guy said? The guy said, we don't need no more lifeboats. This boat could never sink. This ship will never sink. Then he had the audacity to say, not even God can sink this ship. Really? You wonder why it sunk then? God is not a God to be mocked. And the stories are endless. Because you have a plane crash and one person survives because that one person was the one that said, I believe in the power of God. God loves his people. God is crying when his people is crying. But sometimes he allows things to happen. Even the word of God says, my people don't listen when I'm calling out to them. So I speak to them in the midst of their pain and their tears. Because apparently that's the only time people want to hear God's voice. When you got that car, that money, that house, your family, your husband, your wife, your kids, everything's doing well. You don't even want to remember to thank God. You don't even acknowledge him. The second something's wrong, oh God help. Brothers and sisters, we need to wake up. Sons and daughters of Zion, we need to wake up. I can speak for another two, three hours because the Holy Spirit on me right now and my heart is just burning. The Lord is so sad. His heart is broken. Can you imagine going to a school run? you got five kids in that school, but because they're naughty, you're only allowed to bring home two. Can you imagine what that would feel like as a parent? And I ain't talking about going back to get them tomorrow. That is it. There is no more chance to be with them ever again. That's how God's feel coming back to this earth and not being able to bring all his children with him to heaven because of disobedience and sin. 
And this is why he keeps delaying his return, giving people the chance to repent. And they're taking it for granted. And God is saying, repent. Repent, there is no sin in the kingdom of heaven. It's like the law of the land. If you steal, you go to prison. God's law says, if you sin, you go to hell. You come to Jesus and he'll give you the power to overcome sin so you can go to heaven. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you. You can't stop smoking by yourself. You can't stop sexual immorality by yourself. You can't take your anger by yourself. You're vain. You can't leave the house without makeup. The depression. Listen, only God can fill this void. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the strength to overcome these things. Priests, brothers and sisters, go on your knees and say, Jesus, please come into my heart. I accept you as my personal saviour. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit that when you come back to, pre to get your church that I will be prepared and ready to go with you to heaven. Cry out to God. Ask him for help. Because you're only going to put it off and rely on your own understanding until he comes like what? A thief in the night. Why do you think he uses metaphors? Because no one don't expect the thief to come. Trust me, I used to be one. Before the Lord delivered me, I'm taking off your door when you're in deep sleep, when you least expect it. By the time you wake up, it's too late because I'm above you with a big tall shotgun and you don't even have a chance to blink. And the Lord is coming back like a thief when we least expect it. Otherwise, mankind would have done all manner of sin and tried to repent at the final minute and it don't work like that. Please. Jesus loves you. God loves you. God loves you so much. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you were. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are right now. It doesn't matter what you've done. For the fact that you're still alive, Jesus is asking you to accept him. He's knocking at your door. He wants to save you and give you salvation. If you only knew the mansions in heaven. If you only knew there's no pain, there's no tears, there's no working. It's just love, peace, joy, happiness, angelic beings, being in the presence of the eternal Father, the Abba Creator. How can you swap that for house, land and cars? How can you swap that for temporary sin, temporary peace? Stop blaming God for what goes wrong because you know what we're going to do next? You might end up in hell. And blaming God for that too. When God did everything he could to help you to avoid it. Make your choice. Choose now, brothers and sisters. Choose Jesus. Choose heaven. Renounce the devil. You are stronger than you think. God, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The devil is under your feet. Stop letting him manipulate you. Whatever grip he has on you, she just breaks chains. I was chained up. I was chained up. I was chained up in gang lifestyle. I used to carry a gun even to the police station. I didn't care. They ever had me chained up in alcohol, drinking rum daily. Smoking spliff after spliff daily. I listened to the bad man music and the gangster lifestyle was like a sweet... I loved it. I was lost. Promiscuous sex, different women, or two, three different women in one day, two, three different women at one time. Never had me lost. And between the gangs and the guns and the drugs, going to prison, coming back out, there was nothing that was filling a void in my chest that I was only feeling temporarily. Until one day, God said, You know what? Let me tell you something. You want freedom? Come to me. And I obeyed. And I've been so free. I've been so happy. The Lord loves me despite my nasty behavior. I'm a hundred percent sure that 50% of you out there or even more was never as bad and crud as I was. And God's love pulled me out. Receive God's love in your heart. Let him pull you out too. Go and pray for your family after you receive the strength. Go and pray for your friends. Because I promise you not even your worst enemy you don't want to see in hell. I promise you whatever love, joy and peace that you're feeling, whatever area of your life is in, 
right now God is giving that to you and when the rapture happens and Jesus comes and leaves there will be no more love nor joy nor peace all of that will go do you know that what will feel like huh can you imagine how it would feel you don't want to find out Jesus is crying for you it's like you're in a boxing ring getting beaten up and you're about to die. He's on the sidelines cheering you on saying, tag me in, I'll give you victory. It's like you're in a hundred meter race and you're losing. And if you just take one second to put your eyes on the charity who's cheering for you the most. God's cheering for you to win. And people are ignoring and turning their back on God and then blaming him for everything that happens. Wake up, brothers and sisters, and stay woke. I love you. Jesus loves you. Please just repent. If you haven't tried anything, try Jesus. It doesn't take five, it doesn't even take 20 seconds to do the prayer. Don't let somebody who don't know God or somebody who do know God explain God to you. Go and ask God, let him explain himself. Because people are saying, is he a king? Is he not? He said he's a king. Who are you to tell him he wasn't a king? He said his kingdom wasn't of this world. When they asked him, where's your kingdom? His kingdom was in heaven. His palace and his, his territory is all in heaven. I'm Jamaican. Nobody can tell me I'm not come from Jamaica. I'm born and grew in Jamaica. So if 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 them if them are gonna say, oh, oh the man for come from Jamaica and the man sound like an Englishman. Listen, don't worry about what I sound like. I've developed the, the, the knowledge and the skill of speaking English, yeah? I'm born and bred Jamaican. My mother was Jamaican and my father was Jamaican. So how can you say, oh, because he's speaking English, he can't be a Jamaican? Or you let someone else tell you, no, 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 he's English still, he's English, he's English blood. Who are you going to tell me who I am? And who are you to tell God, Jesus isn't the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Go and ask him for yourself then, and you'll find out. Because he loves you and he's waiting. But he ain't going to wait forever. It's like when you're going somewhere with someone and they're late. You wait for them because you love them. But are you going to wait forever? No. Because you need to get to what you need to get to. You might be late because of them, but you ain't going to miss the event because of them. And Jesus is late coming back because he's trying to get his people to repent. These floods, these tsunamis, these earthquakes, these plagues, they're beginning of birth pains. To shake the world to repent to the Lord. Don't take this time to blame God for earthquake. Take the time to say, God, I'm still alive. You're giving me a chance before it's too late. Because birth pains lead up to, uh, what do they call it? Conju conju I don't know. It starts with C. Contractions. And once the contraction gets so painful that like it's unbearable, the child comes. Once these floods and tsunamis get so bad, there's no more worse it can get. It's just going to come and he's going to leave. And you don't want to see what's going to be happening on the earth after that. So please, repent while there's still time. Jesus loves you. I love you. And God bless you.